welcome back to Ice Bane Gaming. Uh, today I'm going to be not really showcasing any particular decks, but I will be showing how infinite combos, mandatory infinite combos I should say, work in Magic the Gathering Arena. Now what is an infinite combo? Well an infinite combo is a uh, combo that could happen any number of times that I uh, could be predetermined by the player. I, however, if it is a mandatory combo, uh, that number is infinite. With infinite combos, usually in like uh, tournaments and stuff, they would end in a draw because if you can't get rid of the combo, that's that. I, this would be because of like uh, ruling 726 in this 266 page word document I that is all about the magic comp rules 726 dash 1 when playing the game players typically make an I uh, make use of mutually understood shortcuts rather than explicitly identifying each game choice this is for infinite combos that you're controlling I uh, dash 1b occasionally the game gets into a state which the actions can be repeated infinitely indefinitely thus creating a loop in th that case the shortcuts can be used to determine how many times those actions are repeated without having to actually perform them and how the loop is broken broken is a keyword if a loop only contains mandatory actions the game is a draw. Now, if you have a way of breaking mandatory actions, uh, then it no longer is a mandatory loop and falls under all of the other rules that loops can take. 726-5, no player can be forced to perform an action that can end a loop other than the actions called for by objects involved in the loop. Now this could result in a tournament ending in a draw, even if a player could essentially uh, just lose the game because of the loop. Uh, so like if your opponent had a way to cancel the loop when you spitefully set up a mandatory loop that would end in a draw, they could just out of spite back at you uh, not end the loop and make both people lose and not just one person. What we're really focused on here is 726-4 and also a little bit of 726-5. Now how do these perform in Arena? Now to make this possible today I had to make a burner account. This account I only have made one deck with and that deck is used in like one loop. Otherwise, it's got spells to break loops, and that's about it. The first one I'm going to do, it's not going to be test deck. Test deck will come later. Uh, we are going to do, uh, let's go mono black lifesteal, because, well, it's like my life gain deck that I showed before. However, it's uh, just got black as the color. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. And for my other one, uh, it's my can't lose the game deck. All it does is make it so that I can't lose the game. Now, I'm going to be starting with a loop that everybody that plays Arena would probably know if they've played some extent of Historic. Uh, the Marauding Blight Priest and the uh, Exquisite Blood. Marauding Blight Priest and Exquisite Blood combo. Uh, very simple. Everybody knows it. What I'm going to be doing is setting up the board of the opponents so that they can't lose the game. And let's skip forward to when something happens. Alright? Alright, see you there. Alright, so we've set up the board state. I'm going to not attack and let the uh, the Marauding Blight Priest and Exquisite Blood combo go off. As you can see here, the opponent has a Platinum Angel. Uh, this means that they can't lose the game and I can't win the game. Uh, this means that they can't die from losing their full life total. Now, one of the many ways to quickly trigger 
a Marauding Blight Priest and Exquisite Blood combo is to just deal one damage or just gain one life. Vicious Rumors does both of those for one mana, so here we go. There we go. And the combo starts. We will speed it up a little bit. Alright, slowing down. Here is where the combo becomes infinite. When you reach zero. Usually, the game would end when you reach zero with the Marauding Blight Priest Exquisite Blood combo. However, thanks to the Platinum Angel uh, that an opponent has, they can't lose the game from going less than t uh, zero life. And this combo can't be broken currently. As you can see, the opponent is tapped out. Even though they're playing a deck with instants to remove, they can't stop the combo. As a result, it's going to keep going down until you get this prompt. Warning, please take a different action or the game will end in a draw. I've seen this happen plenty of times accidentally with controlled loops where I was doing the action repetitively trying to get an arbitrarily large number and the game thought I was doing a mandatory infinite loop even though I was not. I was taking actions. But that's just how the game is programmed. I but now that we can't break this combo, I could hit resolve. The opponent hits resolve. I hit resolve again. The opponent hits resolve again. I hit resolve yet another time. Opponent. Me. Opponent. And draw. That is the basic of how infinite combos work in magic. If you can't break them, they end in a draw. Alright, so let's do that again, but with the opponent having the ability to cancel out my combo. So, my opponent has a uh, Cloud Steel Kirin, this one right here, Cloud Steel Kirin, and uh, it essentially turns any creature into a Platinum Angel. Uh, this Academy Wall is currently my Plat Angel. So, what can I do? Well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attack with this bad boy. And, well, I didn't see that Revenge of Ravens triggered. Uh-oh. Well, let's let the combo happen. I'm going to hit resolve all. So it starts up. And let's fast forward to wherever it tells me that it's going to draw. Alright. That is 44 turns in. We have gotten the thing that says we have to take a different action. Now the reason I'm not recording on my other computer is because it's slow as fuck. Uh, it is currently six turns behind catching up and it will be ready in just a second. All right. So it gave me the warning on the other one. Now you can't see my hands but in my hands as my other account I have an instant that returns a permanent card to the top of its owner's library. I have the option to either continue letting the combo happen and lose the game and let my opponent lose the game, or I could use this enchantment to target either my Academy Wall, the Marauding Blight Priest, or the Exquisite Blood, the three cards that are part of this infinite combo mandatory loop. So. With this, I will, just for the laughs, desynchronize, I, let's go with Exquisite Blood. There we go. We've had enough fun. I already win the game. So let's put that down there. Okay. Uh, they scry, they saw two islands that put them on top. Doesn't matter, because I targeted Exquisite Blood. I did not lose the game. That would be the end of the combo in a way that would make you 
break out and continue to live. I, I could alternatively target my Cloud Steel Kirin or Academy Wall, and then that would have resulted in me losing. So this is a way to keep in the game. That's what I wanted to show you with this deck. Let's move on to another deck. I concede because I can't get rid of that Cloud Steel Kirin. Oh, I just can't beat myself. Also, yay, I win. I beat somebody with an infinite combo deck. All right, uh, let's do this again. However, the deck I will be playing here is my infinite polyraptors deck that I showcased in the week before last's video. I missed an upload because, well, I was moving. Uh, and let's get started, shall we? We have half of this stuff already that we need. And let's keep. I'll go forward to when I have the combo ready. See you there. All right, here we are. I uh, totally didn't take forever to get to this board presence, but hey, I, this is a way to showcase this combo uh, with the Forerunner of the Empire. Technically speaking, we don't want him. So, uh, for this situation, I guess I could just kill him, get rid of him. There we go. This would show how the Marauding Raptor and Polyraptor combo is truly infinite. So, the combo should now cascade. Now I'm going to gain an infinite number of Polyraptors. And my Marauding Raptor is going to grow infinitely big. And there's the warning. Uh, now, because I am playing this combo, I could have the choice of letting the Polyraptor end in a draw, or I could use one of my Lightnings to get rid of the Marauding Raptor, because a Lightning would not get rid of Polyraptor. Uh, but, for the sake of this, I will Lightning Strike the Marauding Raptor. Now, the reason I got rid of the Forerunner of the Empire earlier is because while he could make you have like a, a thousand polyraptors, which I will showcase in a little bit. Uh, he also stops the Marauding Raptor combo. Uh, you just need to activate him three times and then the Marauding Raptor is gone. But here, let's just end the combo and uh, use our flooded board. Polyraptors to destroy our opponent. They had a big board, but I mean, we got better things than that. Uh, they're also with the uh, with the Forerunner combo. You could wipe their board as well as increase yours. So the Forerunner is pretty good. Let's take some damage and get on to the next one. Ouch. <laughs> Ooh. All right, here it is. Forerunner of the Empire. Uh, I'm going to have to pass my turn real quick. All right, with the Forerunner in play, play my Polyraptor. Uh, let's just... Uh, Gameplay, switch uh, auto order off, decline that for now. Marauding Raptor first. Let's do one Forerunner. Take action once more with that. And this would be the last one that I'll do like that. And let's do 
Forerunner of the Empire one last time. Take action. Alright, done. And this is going to result in a complete board wipe. Take action. Gotta wait for my other computer to catch up as well. Alright, sacrifice is a uh, planes. Take action once more. Gotta wait for my old and slow computer. That's my spare to catch up. And now it's caught up. Take action. I might actually fry my other computer at this rate. Just gotta get through all the silver ca uh, clad ferocidons. Okay, they sacrifice an island. And another island. And let's take action. Double again. Let those all go in that order. And one last run of it. And that's how you break that infinite combo. Way more effective than using a lightning bolt, as you could see. So many more polyraptors. Wow. Twelve polyraptors. See? We got twelve polyraptors at the end of it. Isn't that cool? Alright. Let's just uh, skip turn for now, end turn. Uh, my other computer still is on the last forerunner trigger. That's why I don't record that one while I'm doing this. Yeah, out of curiosity, you strike them with lightning, and it does not make more than 250 tokens. Alright, well, we know what the limit is. So don't do more than five new polyraptors when you're doing your super buff uh, before you start activating forerunners. Alright, they're gonna die. Watch this. Nice! This last deck I'm going to show is not a viable one in any means, but I'm just showing it because, well, it's a fun one to experiment with. These are some other mandatory infinite combos in Arena that exist, but I don't know what you would use them for. Uh, you'll see what I mean. All right, we got half and Scheming Symmetry. Scheming Symmetry is not a card that you'd play much in any competitive way because it allows the opponent to also get their combo, but we're using it because this test deck, we don't really care about the opponent getting combo. Uh, 
let's just do this for now. I will use the easiest to pull off of all the combos available in this deck. Uh, let's start with the Scheming Symmetry, choose my opponent and me, and we'll both select a card. Uh, I will choose Solemnity, uh, then I would have combo in hand. Let's use Solemnity at first. Um, we have this so that we could search for one of our legendary permanents. There's the Plains, Luminous Brood Moth. Now, one of the cool things that we could do with this deck is the most basic form of this combo. Luminous Brood Moth and Solemnity. Uh, play any creature that's a 0 0 that enters with plus 1 plus 1 counters. Resolve. It dies. Luminous Brood Moth resummons it. And it enters with a flying counter. The flying counter never shows. And then it starts a loop. Isn't this a fun loop? Now, what are the applications with this? Hmm? Well, we'll see in a minute. First, we have to lose the game. All right, now we're going to lose. It'll end in a draw. So let's just concede because, well, we've shown off what it does. I uh, Solemnity and Luminous Broodmoth, pretty good combo if you want to keep your things on the board. If you have a way of making this never die uh, and then have everything else on your field, just anything. If it dies, it just re-enters immediately. So it's a practical use of combo. Uh, but it could also be used to create zero zeros that just infinitely die. Anyways, practical uses. Planes, Luminous Brood Moth, and then we could do the Wildwood Scourge. Or we could even do an Evolving Adaptive, because it does the same thing. So, if you're gonna do this, you would want the auto order to be off, so that way uh, you could actually do the damage, because the infinite combo is never gonna end. But this makes it so that the combo ends as soon as your opponent dies, because you got something dealing damage based on creatures dying. Uh, and alternatively, you could do one where it's creatures entering the battlefield, because, well, the creature would be entering the battlefield as well. But you could keep doing this until your opponent's dead. Uh, this... not a good combo. Not a good combo at all. I... I suppose if you had a deck purely built around it, with say like a really cheap 0-0, uh, zero, zero, uh, like a white, black, and green, because green has the most zero zeros. Uh, you'd be able to pull this off in a competitive way, I guess. But, yeah. This is just one practical use. Uh, and there's more fun combos I have built around Illuminous Broodmoth and Solemnity than just dealing damage constantly. We'll show those in a second. Alright, finally. Took me forever and a day to get to uh, two mana that are white. So now I could play my Luminous Brugma. Alright, so. Uh, this is a banned card. Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it's escaped. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you gain 3 life and draw a card. Then you put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. So, this allowed people to uh, get infinite triggers to get infinite life and infinite card draws. I, and essentially, uh, it just keeps dying because it's not escaped. It keeps getting brought back from the Broodmoth. And I... Uh, yeah, it just 
put everything that you want uh, into the battlefield. It's a pretty good card to use in this combo, but it's banned in Arena. So, I could assume it's banned in uh, real life tournaments as well. But, because I'm playing against myself, there's no holds bound, I could play this card and have it in my deck. Uh, this deck is really not viable because of that. I Let's just set it to auto triggers because then we'd get an infinite combo. And let's put a swamp onto the battlefield, yeah. And because I have another card in my uh, in my play, Nightmare Shepherd, I could end this combo at any time. I this would make the combo a bit bigger, but yeah, it makes it something that you could actually play. Now, would you ever do a Luminous Bro uh, Brood Moth, Solemnity, Nightmare Shepherd, and uh, well? Uro no longer, now Croxa is going to be the one that you'd use. Uh, Croxa is pretty much the same as Uro, but uh, when it enters the battlefield, it uh, makes the opponent discard a card, and then if you don't discard a card, uh, they lose 3 life. So, they, uh, it's a way to do an infinite loop to damage them. Let's decline for now, and show why this card is banned. It allows you to draw your deck. And because of this, uh, if you were doing this combo, you'd have a combo piece to end the combo at any time, you'd get the mana to play that combo piece, and then you'd remove him. Well, you'd remove the Luminous Broodmoth or Solemnity. Well, probably Luminous Broodmoth out of all of them, because, well, it would just save a couple turns, because uh, it would summon it with a flying counter, and then it would die because it wasn't brought from the graveyard with escape. So then, like, it would it would just die again, and then you could escape it at any time. But it would not keep on cycling because it wouldn't gain that flying token. But yeah, unfortunately, I do not think I put any other combo enders in here, so... And maybe like one more turn. I will activate the Nightmare Shepherd and show why it's a combo ender for the uh, Luminous Broodmoth and Solemnity. Uh, it makes the creature into a token version that does not trigger the Luminous Broodmoth because, well, it doesn't go to the graveyard. And it just ends the combo right there. Alright, and well... Now we have every card that we might possibly need. Say we had a combo piece. Uh, you're running Luminous Broodmoth and Solemnity. You may as well be running a uh, Approach of a Second Sun. And, well, yeah, you'd just like uh, maybe blink uh, your Luminous Broodmoth or your Solemnity because you'd be having white and blue. Uh, bring him back and then kill him in some way. And then you'd start the cycle again after playing your Approach to the Second Sun, get it back in hand, uh, blink the Broodmoth again, play the S Approach of the Second Sun, and you win the game. That's just an example of something that you could have done with it. But, yeah. It's an infinite combo that's mandatory if you don't set things up with like a Nightmare Shepherd or something to blink these out or exile them, bounce them, anything that you might do to end the combo. If you don't have a way, then it's a mandatory infinite combo and would end in a draw. And that's pretty much what I wanted to show. I I think my opponent's a little scared at the moment, you know? Uh, I see them shaking in their boots, can't you see it? And, uh, oh, I think they're about to concede, they're, they're crying, they're crying now, and, oh, Oh, they, they, there they go. They, they ran with their uh, tail between their legs. But yeah, that's, that's that. Pretty cool, huh? Well, that's how infinite combos work in Arena. That's that. Alright, and uh, put something funny on screen to end the video. Alright, uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you want to do. And most importantly, have a good one. Bye.